So we're back, and it's uh, Comp 391, um, Intro to Game and Simulation. It's week three, lesson three, part two, and we're in the Blender side of things uh, right now. Um, last week, I kind of gave you your first assignment, and we talked about the five little things I want you to do. Let's cover a couple of them today, if we can. And I'm going to give you some ideas about what to do to create your character uh, or your, uh, your vehicle or whatever you want to do. Um, I think the easiest thing for me is always to kind of come up with a um, some kind of avatar that you want to use for your game. So let's say I wanted to make some kind of, of um, I'm, I'm making a 3D game. First of all, what kind of game are you making? 3D, 2D, whatever. Um, one of the things I want to do is make sure that um, I, I use one of my most common um, sorry just slide in there. Uh, again, a more, kind of a common um, uh, object, a shape that I want to I want to do. By the way, you can. One of the things to note. Let's see if this actually this thing actually works now. There we go. So I'm using a cube to start off with, and this is a common shape that I'm going to be using. Now I've, we've talked about last week. We talked about things like mirroring, creating a mirror or a subsurface uh, uh, modifier. We're going to do that today a little bit more, using a mirror or subsurface modifier to create our first character, right? I don't want to, especially with characters, if I was going to make a, an avatar of some sort, it doesn't make sense to me, just like we should, I talked about last time, to create uh, the eye and then the right eye and the left eye separately, or even the right arm and the left arm separately. I want to be able to create them together. Once I create one side, I create the other side, then I mirror the two, right? That's the one thing. I also want to talk about, uh, you know, kind of a edge cut and slide techniques that we can use uh, to, in to increase the number of cuts uh, by selecting an edge and then, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, create, sele selecting an edge loop and or adding an edge loop. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to move into the cube. I'm going to start with a cube uh, for this tutorial. And what I want to do is I want to go right into <coughs> edit mode. So in edit mode, I want to subdivide this thing a bunch of times. So first thing I'm going to click subdivide. Instead of clicking subdivide again, I'm going to click the this button here for number of cuts on the left. Right? So I'm going to kind of cut this is two cuts. Now what's the problem if I just did two cuts and if I took try to take away half of it away, there really isn't a half, right? There isn't a kind of a middle mark. So two cuts is not really enough for me if I'm starting to develop a character. Three cuts is good because three cuts gives me this middle line. Right, so a, pl a place where if I was going to do some mirroring, I could literally cut this this half out uh, when I start creating my object. Right, so this is okay. So three cuts. I don't have a lot of detail though. Like three cuts means I only have like a couple of, of options here. Um, I could add specific um, uh, additional edge loops and stuff here, which we're going to talk about in a second. And if you notice here, loop, cut, and slide on the left hand corner. There's also a um, a shortcut key of Control R, which we're going to learn how to do uh, soon enough. But that's the key we're going to use to to create this edge loop in a second. So I could do this and add edge loops to where I want to add detail. For example, the eye. We kind of did a face last time. We're going to do a character out of a block with an eye and a mouth and everything and hands and you know feet, the whole deal, right? Slowly, slowly. Okay. So this is kind of one of the aspects here. Um, so maybe if we, if we add a couple more cuts, if every cut I do, like this again would be a bad cut because you see how the middle the middle here has, um, you know, there is no middle. Means That means either more, I would get either more or less than half of the object, right? Let's do one more. So to me, uneven number of cuts, like five, seven, those kind of number of cuts, give you at least more details. So I think this is enough for me to start off, right? Um, that's the first thing. So I've got about five cuts. The next thing is I want to put it into, um, and so I want to move out of perspective mode. Okay, so can anyone recommend a mode, a way I could start off? I want to be able to control, you know, how I uh, manipulate this object. What would you guys do differently? What would you do? I would definitely go into different view, and I think this is. I mean, I'm questioning you only to, you know, to remind you. So again, on my number pad. The one key would be the front key, front perspective mode. Now remember, I'm still in perspective mode, and I want to come out of it. I want to go into ortho mode as much as possible, and that's the five key on the number pad, right? Again, if you don't have a number pad, 
and you're using a laptop, that's okay because on the bottom here, there's a view menu. Let me just pull it up so you guys can see it. There's a view menu here on the bottom that does the exact same thing. It kind of allows you to look at different views. If I want to look at top view, I can click top view, and then I can go perspective instead of ortho, and I can go back to uh, ortho mode and so on. Right. So if I don't have a if I don't have a number pad, I can simply use these. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. There's probably something that you've done. You press something else. Just start over. <coughs> it's easier. Okay. So again, I've I've kind of created my. I'm in top ortho. I want to go to front ortho mode, and I want to zoom in until the object fills most of my screen. Why? I have more control. The more the closer the object is to me, the more I can see the lines. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna deselect all by pressing V. How do I deselect and select? What's the toggle button? A key, right? And then if you notice I'm in solid mode, it's easier for me to, to work in wireframe mode because then I can select edges I can't see, right? So I'm going to click the Z button for wireframe mode, right? All right, now I'm going to use the, what select mode would you recommend that I use to select half of this object? Remember we did this last week, last week, the B select mode button, B. So you click B and then um, I'll select half this object right here. If I just take this piece, right, um, is this enough? If I just just kill these edges and these, would that be enough to have half the object? Can I do this, or should I select the middle one too? Well, if I do this one, right, if I press uh, vertices, I only have the half, right? So let me just undo that. I'll show you that again. So here's this. I've only selected one, two, these three vertices here. The middle vertice I'm not selecting, because if I select this too, let's just show you how to do that. If I go B select mode again, and select the B, the middle vertice too, and then I press X and select vertices, then I have less than half, right? However, I could select uh, B select mode and select the half, just like I did here, press X and select faces, and then I have the same. So depending on which one you select, whether it's faces or edges or vertices, um, it produces a different effect. Both have the same um, outcome, though, depending on what you want. Okay, so I've got half of my shape. This is cool, right? I know I want to put my eye somewhere up here, and I don't want to do too many more cuts because the more cuts I do, increase the poly count, right? I want to keep it low poly count. Well, you know, um, that's one thing. So um, polygons, polygon count for me is, you know, when you play games, it's one of the things that kills your game, really slows your game down when you have a very... Um, high resolution, high poly character or whatever object, right? So you want to kind of do a lower poly count. So I want to add a couple of them here and maybe so a couple of loops that go down this way and a couple of loops that go down this way. What's a loop anyway? Well, if you notice, I've got this edge that goes all the way around, right? Here's, a here's an edge and here's another edge that goes all the way around here where these are called edge loops, right? Edge loops. <coughs> so if I want to um, uh, first of all, I have to be in edge mode, so I'm going to go control tab, right, to go into edge mode. So there's edge select mode. Now, I'm right now I'm in user ortho. If I want to see this correctly from a three-dimensional perspective, I'm going to go into perspective mode just for a second, right? I'm going to kind of zoom out, and so you can see the edges. There are the edges, this edge here, and there's the outer edge, the outer edge that kind of surrounds this whole thing. These are all edge edges, right? So when I'm in here, if I go to select mode, right? And if you look at edge loops, right? So here's an edge loop. So I want to select an edge loop. I have to first click on the, the first edge, which is, um, I got the wrong edge. I want this edge, right? Which is the outer edge. Take a look. So this outer edge, this first outer edge is selected, right? Now if I go to select mode, right? And I go to edge loop, right? It selects the entire loop. This can be really useful, this entire loop. So if I just do this, you know, this deselect all, for example, let's do the middle one. So I, I, like, I select an edge along the loop I want, right? Here it is. So here's my edge. And I want it this middle edge loop. I go to the I go to select and I go to edge loop, right? And if you notice there's a little underline under the E, right? Because that's the uh, probably the hotkey. So if I go control E, right? It says, um, I can do kind of, uh, no, that's probably not it. Maybe Shift-E or E. No, I was right, edge loops. 
I can kind of go down to an edge loop, right? And that'll kind of create that edge loop right there. Yeah. Shift, Alt, Shift, right, right, Shift, Alt, right click. Yeah, that'll do it too. So again, I, I, for first you have to select it first. So first select the edge, and then Shift, and for me, Alt would be Option, uh, uh, right click, and that would select the whole edge, right? The idea, the reason why we want to make an edge loop like this, right, is because what I want to do sometimes is if I want to, okay, look at the control I have. Um, if I want to press the S key for scale, and then I want to scale this loop in, I can scale the entire loop, right, as opposed to uh, just one edge. Right? This is really, really, really important to do and know how to do this, right, because it creates our shapes in different ways. I'm going to undo that change. So sele uh, loop selection is really, really important. But sometimes I want to do a loop cut and slide, right? So if you look on the left here, loop cut and slide is also something that I can put in. You need to have an idea of where you want it. And if you see this, if I, once I click loop cut and slide, right, if you notice, I can put a new loop in between other loops, sometimes not just vertically, but also horizontally. So I want to create another loop that goes in here. I can do that with loop cut, loop cut and slide. Before I go there though, I'm just going to deselect all, right? And I'm going to go into front ortho mode just for a second, right? So back into front ortho mode, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to select all, right? And what I what I need to do first, because I know I'm, I want to mirror everything I do from now on on my left side, I got to go into uh, my modifiers option, and I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. I want to be able to do that. And now, on the left-hand side, I have a mirror, a mirroring what I do on the right-hand side. Hey, take a look. It's mirroring across the x-axis, right? This is really important. You can also mirror across the y-axis and the z-axis if you really want to. Be careful. This will mess you up if you, do, if you select the wrong one, right? But you could mirror across different axes, axes right? Right now, it's across the x-axis that I'm mirroring. It means across this way, from here to there. It doesn't mean... That the y that the, that the z axis is the one I'm mirroring across. It means which one am I mirroring? The x axis, which means I'm going from across this axis here, right? If I choose the y axis as well, it produces a wacky effect. Be careful. Okay, so just the x axis is enough. All right, so now I'm going to deselect all. All right, cool. So there, I'm in. I've got my my other side. If I press the Z button to see, I see I, I have a solid object now, right? I'm just able to control only half of it because I'm using I'm in mirror mode. Right? Okay, I want to use this loop cut and slide idea to add additional loops in here, right? Right here in this corner. See this one right here? This is the one that I want to add additional loops to. So it's going to be in here, a couple loops there, and a couple loops in here that I want to be able to add so it can, I can add additional detail in this area, right? So I'm going to choose loop cut and slide. And if you notice, if I hover over it, it says my hotkey is control and R. So if I go control R, then I have my loop cut and slide here. Here it is. I want to make one that's here. And now I'm not done. Even if I press uh, if I press a left mouse button once, I can still move it around. Right? See where my loop can I can I can kind of move my, my loop wherever I want. Let's press escape. If I press escape, it kind of puts my loop in the middle. Exactly in the middle. Right? Okay. If I press enter, so I have my first loop in the in the dead middle of this uh, of these two this face. So I've actually divided my face into two halves. But it's doing this all around, so fully around the entire shape. Right? So the loop is not just the one we see, but the one that's fully around everything. Okay, I want to do some more. So I'm going to do Control R again, and this time it's going to be in the, in the exact middle of the other one. I'm just press uh, Enter, or sorry, left click and Enter to accept. And now one more. I want to press Control R, loop, cut, and slide, and make another one here, right? and enter to accept. So now I've got like one, two, three, four cuts in there, right? One, two, three, four cuts. I'll, I'll click away so you can see what I'm talking about. It looks like this. All right, can you see that? Guys, I'm not sure if you can see it on the, on the screen, but this is what I've done. So I've gone, I've gone control R, loop, cut, and slide, and I'm putting four little cuts here. The reason why is I want a lot of control up here. Now I've got all these extra cuts down here too, but that's okay. This is the area that I really want to add some more detail. I don't want to add it everywhere because it adds too many polygons later on, right? I just do want to add it in here. Okay, cool. Let's do the same thing with loop, cut, and slice. So Control-R, except this time, instead of uh, 
I'm doing it uh, vertically, I'm doing it horizontally. And press enter. And now I'll do the same thing, control R, and I'm going to move this, this vertical uh, loop right here between the other ones, and enter. And then control R, and I'm going to add another vertical loop here, or sorry, horizontal loop here, and then enter. Okay, I think I've got the level of detail I want right here. See, this is where my eye is going to be. Take a look at all the detail I have here compared to what I had before, lots, right? So I want to make this eye round, right? Kind of a rounded eye, right? All right, so now we're going to move into, I'm going to kind of zoom in there, right? So I'm going to kind of move my object around, right? And I want to move in so I, I see the eye only. So here, sorry, i got to go back into, into ortho mode. Here I am, right? So this is what you should see now. I'm right in there. Zoom right in. Okay, if you notice now, I see, I mean, I could certainly select edges, but I think the best mode for this one would be vertices. So I'm going to go to vertex select mode, so control tab, go into vertex select mode. And now I'm going to do kind of some, some, somewhat similar of what we did last time. I'm going to select all these kind of uh, vertices here. Right, right around. Just to make sure that I, I didn't, I do that properly. I definitely deselect all. You have to deselect all first. Let's try that again. So one, two, three, four. These four. Right. Now I'm in wireframe mode, so I'm in front ortho. So these are the ones I got. I want to press S to scale, right? And I want to kind of push my stuff in a little bit, right? And what I want to do is kind of create almost a rounded like corner to this whole thing, right? Rounded corner. So kind of a little bit more rounded than before, right? Now this works well. I've kind of, I've kind of got the eye to kind of show me a little bit more of this, right? And this is cool. Would there be another way that you recommend that I do this differently for the people that are here with me? Remember, I got to be careful. I am in I am in this uh, wireframe mode, and guess what I'm getting? I'm getting the back wires crossed, right? So I've got this front one, and I got the back one going on. Um, would you recommend I do something differently than this? Matt, what do you think? I've got the front, I've kind of selected stuff. I thought it was good, but somehow I've got these, I've got the front, one front ver vertex, and a couple, three of them the back ones. How do I prevent that? Go back into, into full, exactly, go back into solid mode, right? So let me just undo that change. I'm going to undo those changes, and I'm going to deselect all. I'm going to go definitely into front mode again, front ortho, and go into select Z to go into solid mode. And this way, I can't select my other um, vertices anywhere else. Okay, cool. So I want to get definitely get this one, and this one, this one, and this one. Now, I want to make it more rounded here, right? More rounded here. And I remember that there is, if I start um, doing things like proportional editing, that might help me. So I'm going to click on proportional editing and kind of enable that. And now when I select, if I select these areas here just for a second, you're going to see that it just changed things a little bit differently. When I press S, right, now if you notice, if I press proportional editing, what does it do? Well, there's a problem here, isn't there? If I use proportional editing, it, it takes the entire area around me to do this. So be careful when you do it. You may not want to do, do this, at least from this, uh, this angle. If I kind of go out for a second, Right? And if I press S, see how, my, how big my influence is? Make sure your influence is really small, like almost the exact same size as the area that you're going to be proportional editing. You want it to curl in a little bit so the eye can kind of look more realistic right, with proportional editing. But you definitely do not want, I'm just going to do that again, you do not want the um, eye to curve in too much more. So I'm just using the proportional editing to kind of um, deform the eye a little bit more uh, evenly so it looks more rounded. That's all I'm doing. Okay, so I've kind of put it to there. Your eye might look a little different than my eye. Hey, the great thing is that my eye on both sides, right, not on this side, take a look, on the back it's not happening, but on this side and this side over here, you just can't see it, is exactly the same. Okay, I'm going to zoom into that, front mode, zoom in there. Now this is the time where we can actually, I want to select this loop. Look at this loop I want to select. This one in, in front of me, right? I'm going to go into um, edge mode. And what was that shortcut key you told me about? Right? For edge, edge select. First I'm going to select one edge. So 
So I'm selecting one edge. So I'm in edge select mode, selecting only one edge, right? And I want this whole loop to come up. Can I use loop select mode to do that? Well, the answer is no, right? So you'd have to select each one of these individually, this, these edges, right? You could also do this with, um, with C select mode, right? The only thing is you have to be very careful. So here's my whole eye. I'm selecting the edges around the eye, right? Cool, I've done that. Now I want to sync this eye in a little bit uh, across the, I'm just going to pull out a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about, across the uh, Y axis or the X axis. Here's the X axis. So here's the Y axis. So this Y axis, I want to kind of pull this in this way so it's inside, right? Before I do that though, I want to uh, ex extrude, yeah. This is, oh, uh, you have to use your, you have to scroll in and out. If you, when you see the circle, you can scroll in and out when that circle is active to control, not when you go to proportional editing. So right now you're, you're just, it's too big, you can't see it. You have to scroll out a little bit so you can see the circle. The circle of influence uh, will appear when you, when you start selecting, when you start uh, doing some kind of scaling or whatever. Okay, so I've got this edge selected, these edges, and I want to pull in. I'm going to do an extrude. I'm going to press E for extrude, and then I'm going to press Enter. And the reason for that is I just created a bunch of edges that are duplicate edges, right? If I want to extrude up, right, so I'm going to press the E button and extrude outwards, right? If you notice, it kind of uh, extrudes in all directions. And I want to extrude across the Y axis, right? So I want, I'm want i only going to push the Y axis. So here, let me show you how it looks like from the, from the angle, right? If I want to kind of create an edge to extrude down into, watch, E. And then if I go all over the place, it'll go all over like these little peepers come out, right? Little eye stalks, right? You don't want that. I want to go across the Y axis, right? And I want to kind of go in a little bit to create that edge, right? Or maybe a little bit out. Here's my eye. That's cool. This is me, right? And now I want to choose all these faces by going to face select mode, right? So I'm going to go to face select mode and just choose these faces. I know you guys are going to say I'm crazy, but you can do this in any way you like. I'm just trying to show you new techniques. All right, here's my face select mode, and I'm going to press uh, the E for extrude across the Y axis. Press Y after that. That's what I did. And I'm going to kind of pump that in so it's kind of deep in there. And now I have my eyes that look like this, right? kind of eye, eye sockets. If I want to keep doing that, if I don't think that's deep enough, because I want to put actually eyeballs in there too, eventually with my character, right? I want to do it again. I'm going to press E, and I can't see it, right? Okay, I'm going to press Escape. Let me just try that again for you guys. I can. This is a great place to use um, wireframing, right? So I've got. I'm only selecting one because I'm mirroring. I'm also doing it on the other side, right? And here's where I've got my E. I'm <coughs> extruding, and I'm going to go only along the Y axis. I'm constraining the Y axis pressing Y at the same time, and then pulling in so that my, my eyeball can be sunken in here. All right. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Sometimes, though, what we want to do is on the inside, we, we want to make it a little bigger so it can house the eyeball. Um, you can actually hold the eyeball without, without uh, uh, intersecting with it or whatever. If I want to, here, I can, I'm looking at it in wireframe mode. It's inside my object. I can actually scale it. I can press S for scale. Now, because I have, here's your proportional editing mode again. Take a look. Uh, when I press S for scale and I've got these objects selected, I can reduce my sphere of influence here, right? Here's my sphere of influence, right? Until it's where I want it to be. And then um, I can scale the way I like so it's proportional, right? Down to the point that I want. So it creates almost like this tunnel that's inside the eye, right, the eye socket. This is what you're seeing. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm seeing this in wireframe mode. And if you notice, there's a ghost area over here where it's being done at the same time. OK. I mean, I'm using a cube to create my character, right? OK, cool. Let's take it back to front mode. I think I've done everything I want to do with the eye. I'm in front uh, uh, ortho mode. Let's go back into ortho mode. And I'm going to go back into Z for, for uh, because I want to see um, 
kind of solid mode as opposed to wireframe mode. Okay, cool. I've got this hard edge on this side here right now, this hard edge. And I want to use uh, orthographic uh, kind of, or sorry, um, proportional editing to kind of soften this edge a little bit up here, right? I could do a loop cut and slide here, but here's the problem. If I do loop cut and slide now, so first again, I have to be in, in edge mode. So this is the best way to do it. Be, I'm in edge mode and I do control R for loop cut and slide. See how I'm getting a really weird loop. Here's front ortho, take a look, right? It's kind of a weird, a weird ass loop I'm getting, right? Why? Because I've, I've deformed stuff, but if I'm down here where I haven't deformed anything, I'm okay. If I'm up here, I get this weird loop cut and slide. So loop cut and slide won't work for me. All right, so what I wanna do though, is I wanna kind of control, uh, control tap, go back into vertex, vertex mode for a second. Uh, make sure that you're not selected by pressing A, so deselect all. Right click on the top corner here, and now I'm gonna choose S for scale, and I wanna increase my size of my, uh, of my influence to about here. So just, to, so it kinda gets those cuts. And then what I want to do is I want to kind of, if I if I'm in this mode, if I if I'm because I'm in ortho mode, I can only I can only scale what I can see. So this isn't a great mode to be into if I want to pull this thing down in here, right? So I'm only I'm constraining myself into one axis. So let's press escape, right? And I want to move into um, uh, perspective mode like this. I'm going to go back into perspective mode, right? Here I am, right? I definitely want to soften this edge up here. I don't want to soften this one. I don't want to select this one. If I select this one, I'm going to have a part in the middle of his head because it's mirroring, right? So I want to definitely do that. I want to go to here. I want to press S. I want. I can change my sphere of influence, right? And if I want to, uh, if you notice how it's not pulling in, right? The reason why it's not pulling in or out is because of my sphere of influence. Take a look. The more I increase my sphere of influence, all of these objects can kind of soften this area. So I want to kind of move it to about this big. And if you notice, if I pull out, if I pull out this way, then these lines here, the middle line, this line here, and this line down here, these edges, they kind of move in to create almost like a diagonal. Okay, cool. That's it. So I've got what I wanted. So I've kind of created the, this line right here. And again, it's done the same thing on the other side. I've done this because when I move this point in, and I'm going to do that with um, by moving the point. So I'm going to press, um, we'll go back into front ortho mode, okay, and I'll make sure that it's in ortho mode and not perspective mode. So here's front mode, front ortho mode. I want to pull this in. The easiest way to do that without using these two uh, control arrows is press the G button, right? And if you notice. Proportionally, it's going to, uh, if I keep proportional editing on, it's going to make it so that it pulls these other things down as well. Now, yours may not look exactly like mine, but see how it's rounded the face a little bit? Again, I'm making a blow. Oh, yes? Can't this, one look more no. this last one I was doing right now? Sure. Okay, sure. So I'm going to undo. It's great to do this. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm going back into front mode. Front. I'm going to front ortho mode. And then I'm pressing the G button. Look what when I press the G button, look at my sphere of influence. See my sphere of influence up here? Take a look. I need to either keep it this big or make it bigger. If I make it small, I'm just scrolling in now. Then when I do G, it doesn't malform things too much, right? Okay, I'm gonna escape from that. If I make it big, then it pulls some of these points down, which is what I want to do. I want to be able to point pull these down a little bit more to create this rounded look effect, right? Somewhere in the middle there is good. So now I've rounded off that face, the front part of the face. I still have some hard edges. I haven't talked about the right side yet at all. And I still got some hard edges here that I probably want to round off. Like the back of the head is probably something that I want to round off as well. I do want to round it off differently though because the back of the head and the front of the face might be something different, right? For my little character, my little block character. So I'm going to go to the back. So I'm on, I'm on the right side. I'm going to go to the back. Select this edge. Make sure that only that edge is selected, right? And I want to go back into back mode. How do I get into back ortho mode? What's the what's the key sequence? Huh? That's it. 
Here's control. I'm glad that you guys remember because it's important. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep the same sphere of influence to give kind of the same effect. So if I press G, maybe if I want to make it a little better, I want to make it a little bit smoother, I want to add that so that my sphere of influence becomes big so it holds these all these edge loops, but not the middle one, right? And now I want to kind of make it so that it makes it more of a rounded look. i got to be very careful because the more I do this, the more I kind of move it to the, to the, to the middle over here, it kind of makes it a pinched look in the back. I, don't want, to be, I want to be careful about that. Right, so I'm in ortho mode, which is really important though. So it kind of crunches it down to makes that let me give you that like rounded look, right? And depending on what you want for your character's head to look like too, right? Mine, I want mine to look like this. I have an idea of what I want. Okay, good. So now this is what my, my character's head looks like. It's kind of got a front, and the back is a little slightly different. It's kind of slightly bent differently. I got to be careful not to select this one. Take a look, this one here. These middle uh, vertices, if I select them and move them apart, it opens up a gap like this. Look like a little mouth, hello, <laughs> right? We don't want this little mouth to be talking like this, right? So we don't do these middle selections. I'll just un uh, undo that, All right? Same, same thing with this one. If I move this one apart, it'll open up a gap. We don't want to do that when we're mirroring, all right? Okay, cool. So we've got the top of the person's head here, and um, I've got a couple of points. I've left them pointy on purpose because here, I'm, I'm thinking about making some ears up here, like almost like pointy ears, like a, like a rabbit ears or something like that on the right side of my head, right? So how would I do that the best? If I was going to pull these points up, these edges, one, two, three edges, what recommendations do you have for me to pull them up? Definitely, I, I want to do it more organic looking. And, you know, that's why proportional editing works great for organic looking objects, right? Um, you could also argue the point that I don't want to do it organic. I want to make it more pointy and you can take um, Just turn it off. Just go back to proportional editing and turn it off But I'd like to make it that way and I got to be in edge select mode To do that. So I'm going to select these edges Just these these three because I've got three edges here. I can play with you might have less So these are the ones I want to modify right and now if I go into front mode Right, I only see these top edges. This is good um, if I press this button here, or if I drag this arrow, I'm not going to get the sphere of influence, right? Until I start dragging, right? So I'm kind of pulling these up, almost like little cat ears, right? And look what it's doing. It's actually pulling all the other, because my sphere of influence is big enough, it's pulling on my eye, it's pulling on everything else until I get kind of this, you know, this, these ear, this ear look right to it. It's a little up there. There we go. I'm going to go to in, back into front mode, and this time I'm going to pull the same ones, but just to the right a little bit more, so with this red arrow. So I've still got proportional editing on, still got the same influence, but I'm pulling it to the right a little bit, just to make it a little bit pointed to the right. Okay, good. So I've got a bit of a shape to my character now. Creating my, my uh, avatar, if you will. Now again, you can make your avatar look whatever you like. I, I'm just, um, again, I'm doing this because it, it suits me. All right. Now you're going to say, well, this is just a face, right? No, this is the whole body. You're going to see. It's going to look weird, right? Okay, cool. Um, I want to go into front mode again, and I want to shift over, and I want to kind of move this guy up a little bit. And I want to start adding features to the face. Like, for example, you know what? I know that the mouth is going to be down here for me. This is where my mouth is going to be. This is where I have to be really super careful, right? Because remember, there's a mirroring point here, right? Right here. So there's a couple options we have. We can stop mirroring now and accept the changes on both sides, right? Uh, the challenge is that you're going to get, well, anything I do on this side, I have to redo manually on the other side. Or I can modify this afterwards. So what I want is I want to do a bunch of loop cut and slides here, loop cuts in here. And if I do some loop cuts in here, I can add details in the mouth area, which is just down here, especially in the corners here, which is right underneath the eye, right? So let's do that. So let's go, first of all, I've got to be in edge mode, right? So I'm in edge mode. I want to do control R, right? And you see I have my first vertical loop that I've created right here and press enter, right? So escape, make sure it's in the middle, press enter. Make my first cut, control R. I'll do the same thing, control R, right? Make another one in the middle. So I want to give more details, just like we did up there and press enter. And then control R, and then another one down here and press enter. So I've got enough loops now on the top and the bottom 
to create a shape for my mouth. Be very careful. Remember, I don't want to separate this middle loop because once I do, I get a talking area that I don't want to talk, right? I want to connect it. Okay, cool. And you might, if you want to add more detail, you could add additional loop cuts over here as well. Um, if you want it to go far out as much as this. I don't want it to go that far out, so that's why I'm not adding more loop cuts over here. I'm gonna just press A to deselect everything. And now I want to start doing the same thing I did before, right? Well, I want my mouth to be kind of smiley, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, that's just kind of the way I want to make it. And I want it to kind of be pointed, because right now it's kind of square, right? If I wanted to select these things and kind of indent like I did before. So I want to kind of right click, I want to kind of control tab and go into vertex mode, right click on this top vertex over here, right? Now, I know I'm in proportional editing mode, which is okay, right? I want to pull this out a little bit. If I do that, it's going to make my, my jowl kind of big like this, right? I may not want that effect, so I'm just going to control Z that. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull it to the right, but this time I'm going to just reduce my sphere of influence so it's much smaller, right? So it just only hits these, um, you know, some of these things, but not so much. Pull this to the right a little bit more, right? So I'm going to get kind of this smiley effect. I've got to be very careful not to influence my other side. So it's going to pull this you know, this loop and all the other ones closer to the right. I'm going to do the same thing with this bottom one. I'm going to pull it in, right? This bottom one here, I'm going to pull it in. Um, and I'm going to use the G button now because I want to have some um, hand coordinated movement in, inwards. And I want to make sure when I press the G button, my sphere of influence is the right sphere of influence. I'm going to kind of pull this in a little bit just to create this, you know, mouth that looks a little bit like a, like in a little bit. So I've kind of got this, this going almost like this shape. If you're not satisfied, you can always modify stuff again. I'm going to click this one, and I'm going to move this out a little bit, just a tiny bit. And the same thing with this one. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take off proportional editing mode, just because I want to have more control, and just grab this one, this point in the bottom. I'm going to use the G button again. And now, now without proportional editing mode, hold on a second. I'll make sure it's off. So disabled, I don't want it on, and I want to move my, my point in like this so it's rounded. Remember, anything I do on the right side happens on the left side, which is really cool, right? If I want to move my this line here, this whole line down, right, so that the top, my lip, this is where my lip is going to be, this outer, this outer part, these, these parts are going to be my lip, and this inner part here is going to be my mouth. Right, these faces here. I want to strip these faces down, right? But not this part. The lip was going to stay there for control. I want to puff this out, this lip part, right? How do I do that? Well, I want to do two things. I want to go into face mode. I definitely have uh, proportional editing off. Okay, do not have proportional editing on for this one. I want to select these faces, this these ones here, right? From in face mode, select these faces. And what I want to do when I do that, I want to go from one side or the other in uh, wireframe mode, right? So I can see the, the, the mouth, just like I did the eyes, right? I want to pull this in, right? I want to pull this in, but I want to do it so that way when I pull it in, if I pull it in like this, right, without extruding, this is what happens, right? I kind of get this, this weird look like this, right? Now that might be fine for you, but I like to extrude my stuff out. Otherwise, you're going to get all these points trying to connect, right? So I'm going to control Z that, right? I'm going to press E for extrude and then enter. And then I'm going to press E for extrude again and then extrude in, right? Until it's about the same level as the eye. Now I've got a kind of, of have a controlled area where I've pulled everything in. Now I've got a bit of an issue, don't I? Here's my issue, the middle piece. This middle piece is all connected. If I go into... Uh, uh, solid mode. Look what I got in here. I got this middle, it's almost like a tooth <laughs> that I've got in the middle of my mouth, right? I got to get rid of that later, right? Might cause a hole to happen if I'm not careful. So I got to be really careful about getting rid of it. But that's my mouth so far. If you notice, there's, there's a bit of a smile, smiley face going on there, which I'm kind of happy with. And this is okay for me. I still got pretty much of a flat face. I'm going to fix that later on. But for, the, for now, what I want to do is I want to get into these lips. So I'm going to go and right click on these lips just the lip piece, if you can see what I'm talking about here. And I want to puff this out a little bit. So which means I'm going to 
do the same thing. I'm going to go to Z mode. Right here, I've got the lips. I'm going to extrude and press Enter, so E and Enter, and then E again. And this time, I'm going to kind of push this out just a touch, just so they kind of are emboss my lip area. And what it looks like in, in solid mode is this. So my lips are kind of solid like lips like this, right, for the mouth. Now you might say, wow, okay, who cares? That looks pretty ugly. Yeah, but when you smooth it, it looks it looks like a ridge, like a like a rounded ridge. And this is where I'm going, this is effect. You have to think about the final version of where it's gonna go. And you need to play with this a little bit, guys, to figure it all out, right? Okay, I've got my, my shape, my general shape of my face. I'd like to pull this in. This edge here looks pretty lonely. And I want to kind of take this uh, um, vertice right here in the bottom, right? And pull this in to create almost like a, a, a cheek area here, right? To shape my face, right? So how do I do that? Um, again, I'm going to have to go into Control Tab and go into Vertex Select Mode. Make sure I've got everything deselected. That's important. Right, I'm going to click this piece right here, right, which is right next to my to my mouth, right. And what I want to do here is I do want to use um, a proportional editing, so I want to turn proportional editing on, right. And now when I press um, uh, S for scale, I want to make sure that it's big enough that if I want to try and scale this in or out, I'm just going to scale it out just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to just just press this. Um, uh, the, the red arrow, use the manipulator arm, just to pull in to create almost like a um, a cheek-like effect. You'll see what I'm saying in a second. There's my cheek. Right? That's what it looks like now. And if I want to, uh, you know, make it more distinct, I could add additional cuts in here, which I'm not going to do. Okay, mine looks like this right now. Okay, this part here looks weird, right? So I want to definitely pull up my chin because I want to have a bit of a chin for my guy, right? Or my girl, whatever it turns out to be, cat. <laughs> right, got to be careful down here not to grab the middle of my chin, right? But I want to pull this piece, just like I did the, the top for the ears, I want to pull the, this piece out for the bottom of the chin. So I want to kind of grab, and I want to do this now before I get into other things. So I want to go Control, Tab, I want to go into edge select mode, make sure everything is deselected. So I kind of toggle that off and on. And I want to kind of select this bottom area here, right? And I'm only selecting these, these edges, right? On the bottom. I'm in kind of a weird uh, user ortho mode on the bottom here, right? Right now. So that's how I've selected them. Okay. I, it's, it suits me to go into right mode. So I'm going to go into right. Right here I am. And I want to kind of uh, shift my my view so that it's up here. So I've got the bottom of edge of the of the chin, and I want to kind of stick this chin out here. There's a couple ways to do this. If you want to do very accurately, you can use the arrows. If you want to do free form, you can use the G button, right? And you've got a pretty good sphere of influence. I want to increase that sphere just a little bit more. So I pull the mouth out a little bit too. So I'm inside that mouth a little bit, and now I want to kind of extend that chin into the corner, right? Trying to kind of create that chin look. And if I rotate, this is what it looks like, right? See? And I got the, the front face of the character. And it's a little bit more three-dimensional now than it was before in flat with my cube. Now I'm going really slow, guys. I can go much faster than this. The idea here for you guys is to create an avatar that does something, right? Not just a face. Okay. We don't have any arms or legs. Let's do that now, right? So I think we've got to the point where I'm happy with the face. Hey, just to be safe, we're happy, right? And if you're happy with where you're at, this is a good time to save. So let's do that for the first time. We've never saved before, right? But let's do that for the first time. So I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go Save. And it's going to ask me, hey, where do I want to save this thing? Um, I'm going to save this under my Pictures folder. You can save this wherever you like. I'm going to go in, and if I'm on the Mac, I'm going to save it under my Pictures folder. I'm going to call this uh, avatar.blend. It's a .blend file we're creating. Right? Here we are. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to click Save Blender File up here. When I do that, I've got my file saved, and you can see my name is avatar.blend, right? So I can always go back to it if I mess up. It's important because we're good at we're at a stage now where we're happy, right? 
or maybe you are, maybe you're not. But I want to get into the point where I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to do this again. It took me a while to do this, right? So otherwise we're going to be in trouble. So let's pull out some arms here. Right. And you get the idea of what we're doing. All right. Well, here's an arm area that I want to work on through this middle. So I want to go to the right side. Here's the right. And I see this area here that I want to start working on, this right area, where I want to extrude an arm, right? Remember that my avatar is going to be like a head with arms and legs. <laughs> That's what it's going to look like, right? So, which is totally fine. So I want to kind of, in there, I want to add some loop, loop cuts. So I'm going to go control tab to go into edge mode. And I'm going to go control R to add a couple of, of loops. So there's one. There's a vertical loop right in the middle. Do the, do the same thing again. So control R, another vertical loop. Now, if you have trouble putting this in, it might be because uh, the way you've deformed your guy, which don't worry about that. And again, you guys can go, always go back in here. So I've got a couple of, of cuts in here, right? So again, I'm looking at this, these four big uh, squares here. I've got, I'm, I've started to cut this. I'm going to continue to cut. All right, I got to be very careful how many I add because again, I don't want too many. So control R, right here is another cut. And control R. Another cut and control R, another cut and control R, another cut over here. Okay, so I've got a bunch of cuts in here, right? Why? Because I want control when I pull my arms out, right? Same thing for this part. I'm going to control R and I'm going to do a horizontal cut. A horizontal cut is going to be slightly deformed because I've deformed my guy, right? Again, control R, another horizontal cut. And now control R. Another horizontal cut. Control R, another horizontal cut. And a couple more. Control R, another horizontal cut. All I'm cutting is in the middle. And Control R, another horizontal cut. Okay, I got a lot of cuts now on the side. And if you notice, there's more cuts on here, and unfortunately, went all around his head too. Take a look, right? It's all around his head and all down here. Well, this is okay because, but where I really need it is in here. This area here is where I want my to pull my arm out for the first time. Right now, I don't want my arm to be square. I want it to be rounded. Right, so I'm gonna deselect all, go to the right side, kind of zoom in. Right, so until I get to that sweet spot, just below where, just where it starts deforming. See where it starts deforming here, like this, where they're where they're uh, rounded. Right, I want to kind of get into this area somewhere in here. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Don't worry about it. And I want to go Control Tab and get into that vertex select mode. And I want to start selecting these vertices. Again, I'm in solid mode here. Right, so I'm going to select some vertices where I think the shoulder is going to start, which is approximately here. Yours can be slightly bigger or slightly smaller. Don't worry about that. And now I'm going to choose, I'm in proportional editing mode, and I'm going to choose S for scale. And I'm going to kind of scale these in so that they form kind of this rounded look, right, for the arm. This is where the arm is going to start going from, right, approximately. So I'm deforming my, the, the actual character a little bit. Now I'm going to go into Control Tab into Edge Mode, and I want to select all these edges, right? So I'm going to go Edge, 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 right? Select all these edges that just I just created, right around here. There's a faster way of doing this, by the way, but not as accurate. Be careful. Use kind of a um, an Edge Select Mode. What was that? Yes, I know, but the problem is sometimes it'll select other edges that you can't see. So be careful. So this way is more, I, I agree with you 100%, but just be careful. All right, now I want to do this, um, I want to do the same thing. I've only selected, last time I only selected the vertices. This time I'm going to scale, but I'm, I've got all the edges. So I'm going to click S again, right? I still have got my sphere of influence as big as everything, and then I'm going to kind of scale in a little bit more. All right, so it's more rounded again. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go from the other angle. Let's take a look at what I've done. So I've kind of deformed this area here to create an area that I can I can pull out an arm, right? What I want to do here, and I go, I'm going to go from the front for a second. Here's front mode. I'm going to go into Z so, so I can see the uh, um, wireframes. I'm going to pull out a little bit more, right? Am I going too fast? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Running out of time. It's always not enough time when you do Blender stuff, right? Um, on the right side, on the right side, what I want to do is I want to press E for extrude. Look at the area that I'm getting for E for extrude now. It's quite a big area. I don't want to do anything. I'm going to press Enter again to add additional points. Again, whenever we do that, we add additional points so we can do that. 
E, and then enter. So I've got another layer that I can extrude from. And I'm going to press E for extrude and pull them out to the right. If you notice, I have control to go up and down. I don't want that. I want to constrain it to the x-axis. So I want to pull it out to create almost like a shoulder coming out of his face. <coughs> here I am. So maybe almost like, I'm just going to count the blender units here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, maybe six blender units out. And press enter. Okay, what does this look like in solid mode? Well, it looks like this. And if you notice, I've got the shape of the arm, but these points in here, all of these, um, I've got almost like the ridge of the shoulder, the outside of ridge of the shoulder, but inside here, inside these points here, right, I've got these faces, right, all these faces in here that, um, you know, uh, I could, I need control over, right? So now what I want to do is I want to kind of select all these faces. I'm going to go to Control, Tab, go to Face Select Mode really quickly and kind of zoom in. It's kind of hard to see, but what, what I want to do is select all these faces. Now there's a shortcut key for this one as well. But I would recommend highly that you are very careful about how you do it because you may select the wrong faces in this way. So that's why I'm just taking my time. And part of this, I'll be honest with you, is patience, right? And if you mess up, you know, don't be afraid to start over or go back to what you did earlier because it's a process. We build on our avatar, right? We build on the stuff we make. We don't do it all at once sometimes. Okay, cool. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into front mode. And I want to extrude. I'm going to go into Z mode so I can see the, uh, um, my front in wireframe mode like this. And I've selected my faces on my arm. And I'm going to press E for extrude and then enter. Right? So I have extra, extra faces that are on top of each other. And then I'm going to press E for extrude. And then I'm going to constrain it on the X axis. Press X. And then I move it out. So I've got these, these uh, points here. And the cladding is, I want it to come kind of beyond my sh the shape of my shoulder, just a little bit, to about here. A little bit beyond the six uh, unit, blender units. Okay, let's go back into Z mode when you've done that. Take a look at what we've done. So I've kind of got a layer of edges that I've pulled out, like this. And I've got an inner layer, right, of faces that I've pulled in like this. Well, now this is a great a great time now when you've got an arm like or the shoulder like this, right? It's a great opportunity now to kind of pull these in and make the shoulder rounded, right? So again, I'm going to click S at this point. I've got a big sphere of influence from my proportional editing mode, and I'm going to kind of shrink it down a little bit to kind of make it so it's not too square. If you want to make it bigger, you can always go big like this, right? To me, I want to go in, so I want to kind of just go a little bit inner so that they it's not just uh, squared off like this, just a little inner like this. Okay, good. There we go. So my, my arm is kind of sloping in right now. Okay, this is cool. I've got a sloping arm. Um, I could start extending from the bottom because I want to make my if I want to make my arms hang down, or if I want to make my arms go across, I could do that as well. I could kind of make it so that I select less of these uh, faces. So let's do that. So let's deselect all. And I think I want to make these faces come out, so I'm going to kind of select these faces. Again, the more complex you get, guys, the more complex your, your character becomes. And by the way, we talked about materials last time, right? I could select different parts of the character already to, to create more materials for him to come out with. Okay, let's take a look here. All right, let's do this now. I'm going to press uh, E for extrude. First of all, let me go to front mode. Z mode, so I'm in, uh, I'm in wireframe mode. I'm going to press E to extrude and press enter to create additional points. I've got my faces selected. I'm going to press E to extrude and press X to constrain along the X axis and then pull it out a little bit more. So now I've got my, my arm, if you will, my bicep. I'm going to just pull it out. Um, I'm from here, I'm in about one, two, three blender units out, approximately. Right. So again, I'm, I'm pulling it out to the side. My arm is going to be like this at the end, right? Okay, um, the good thing is I can continue to extrude. I want to just pull out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the, what the, my character looks like right now. And I want to continue to extrude a little bit more. So I'm going to press E and then X to um, 
to constrain and then continue to pull up, right? Until I get to the point where I'm comfortable with where I'm going to put my hands. All right. Now I'm going to press E to extrude and then uh, enter, right, to create additional points. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and extend a little bit more, maybe another uh, with X as a constraint, maybe another couple blender units out. Okay, but this time, this is pretty long, I've, I've kind of got a couple of cuts, if you will, right? What I want to do now is look at it from the side using proportional editing mode. I want to press choose S, right? And I want to just reduce my sphere of influence so it covers those points. I'm in kind of a weird mode, but I want to kind of reduce these a little bit so it kind of comes to a point. Almost like this. There we go. Got my arm sticking out. Now what about if I want to, I want to move this whole thing down or, or make it curved or something like that, what could I do? Well, there's many options for me to do this, right? I could um, use the C uh, uh, command to kind of select more than one face in it and, and area. Like for example, if I, use, if I go to the front mode and if I go scroll out to the right side, and then I use C, select mode, and increase my sphere of influence here by scrolling out, right? So now I'm selecting everything that I can see, right? Like this, take a look, right? So I've got all these edges. I wanna make sure that I've kind of, all these edges are selected, and I press escape. Now I've got all this selected. Now I could deform this all at once, right? I'm in front mode, again, showing you that it is, by pressing the G button. If I press the G button and move it down, what happens is I get this weird elbow going on, right? Take a look. I could do that, escape. Or I could press R for rotate, which is really what I want to do, right? And I could start rotating my arm the way I like, almost like a little wing, if you will, right? R for rotate. I could rotate it up or down, right? And I can do that more and more. So I can deselect all, right? I can use uh, C select mode. Select the area that I want to select, which is this part, right? And then with my sphere of influence, right? And then I can press R for rotate, right? R for rotate when I'm done. When I'm done. And I can select, I can kind of move this thing down a little bit more if I wanted to make it so that it's not perfectly straight. It's kind of this like really weird arm. <laughs> I can continue doing that and I can extrude now in a downward motion by selecting these, these uh, um, the front part and so on, or, or or stretching it in and out. Like for example, if I press S select mode, I can make it so that I can bring this more to a point, <laughs> right in here, and so on, and then continue to move my arm so that it's there. Don't worry about the shape of my avatar. Right. The idea here is that you're 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 using the same tools we've talked about over and over again to do this. Okay, a couple more points, and then we'll we'll be done with this one. So let's say you can do the same thing for the feet. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm just going to go into Z mode, right? I've got my arms, and I've, I've selected them. I have it, I've got my shape completely uh, together. Looks like I've got like these little wings or little arms that are coming out. I could continue to rotate them, so they start coming down more and more and more. If I want to create legs, right, there's a couple areas that I would, I would choose. I'm going to choose the bottom. So instead of the top, which, be, which is 7, I could choose Control 7, which is the bottom. I could zoom in, right? And again, I could add additional loop cuts down here to create my legs. So I think this would be a great candidate for loop cuts in here. Another candidate would probably be on the other side. And then from there, drag out two legs, like stick legs, if you will. So this will have four legs. Or if this is already done for us, take a look. I've already got all kinds of things here. If I only make, want to make two legs, I can add additional loop cuts down here. To do that, I can go Control Tab, select edges, right? And then Control, and make sure I'm, I'm deselect everything. Select, deselect, uh, control R for my loop cut. And this is where I have to be very careful here, what I do, because if you notice, it adds additional details. So here's one. Here's a loop cut that I'm adding in the middle. And I'm going to press Enter. Do the, do the same thing, control R, and then press Enter in the middle of that. So I want to add this. Now there's one that I need to add in there, right? But I'm going to get some weird loop cut here. I'm going to show you what, what I'm, I'm talking about here. Take a look. So I've got this really weird loop cut. Take a look. Why? It's because of my, the way I've cut my, my character before. 
So I'm going to kind of do enter, right? Do the same thing, control R, go in the middle, right? Enter, right? So just add additional uh, control down here. Okay, cool. Now I've got an area that I want to uh, I want to extrude out, right? I'm going to deselect all. I'm going to go into control tab. I'm going to hit face, face select mode. And now I'm going to use C select mode, C select mode with a sphere of influences approximately like this to select some of the faces that I want. There we go. Can I go too fast again for you? Okay. And now that I've got this, these faces selected, if I want additional faces, just make sure I want the bottom ones too. So the three even. Oh, that's too much. So <clears throat> let's try this again. So again, C select mode, approximately in the middle. I want to grab these faces. Bam, that's good enough. Um, and some faces that I missed, I can do them manually. So I want them proportional, right? So this one, uh, that's pretty good. There we go. That's more average or even, if I will. And now I can go into uh, front mode. There's front mode. I can go into Z mode for um, uh, wireframe. And I do the same thing. I'm going to go uh, E for extrude, enter, E for extrude. And I want to constrain it on the Z axis and pull the leg down, Z axis, pull the leg down. This is my, the front part of my leg. Right, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing, E for extrude, enter, and then E for extrude. And then I want to pull it down along the Z axis. Right, somewhat, and if I want to make it come to a point, I can now uh, press E for extrude, enter, and then S. I can increase my sphere of influence uh, so it, it hits more of these points, right? And then I could kind of pull it in so that the points look like they're more of a pointed area. All right, so we've got my legs. I know it's kind of funny looking. But this is my character, and I can start coloring him by using materials, right? So I'm going to go back into Z for solid mode. I'm going to pull out. Oops. I'm going to pull out here like this. Take a look. There's, there he is, right? And this is a great opportunity for us to do. Um, uh, uh, first of all, what I'd like to do here, what I recommend to you is apply your modifier by going to tab into object mode. I'm going to click apply. Right here's my I'm applying my modifier, and now I want to use my subsurface modifier or sub uh, to do it again. So I'm going to kind of click add modifier. I'm going to go subdivision surface modifier, and now he's even more rounded. And I'm going to click into the view area and round him some more. Right, and one more time to make him even more rounded, and kind of go in there. See the lips kind of are pronounced now as it was before. If I click smooth. It even makes it smoother. Now I've got this area in the middle that I could have taken away, but I've kind of left it this way. So this is my my avatar. And I've used a, a cube, a simple cube, to do that without any and uh, without any additional objects, right? And this would be a good a good place to stop, right? Where I've got my guy, and this could be my guy that I run around with and, and do stuff with. Again, it's a very simple example. I'm using a cube, right? But there's nothing wrong with using different kinds of objects in combination to do the same kind of thing. If I want to add eyes, I can use two spheres and I can move them in here. If I want to add teeth, I can do that too. Well, however complex I want to take it. Now we've taken an hour. My recommendation for each of the meshes that you need to create for your, for your project, for your little assignment, right? I wouldn't spend more than a couple hours for each, pro, for each uh, mesh. That's a lot at the top end, guys. So we're talking about maximum 10 hours for this whole thing. I don't want you to spend more than that. If you spend more than 10 hours for this whole thing, it's too much. And I'm going really slow too, right? So um, you guys can do it a little faster. It's good to have a plan too. I recommend you guys have a plan of what you want to create. Now again, this thing is due next week on Friday, if I'm not wrong, right? So next week on Wednesday, um, we'll check to see what you've got going. Third, on Friday, we'll do more. This Friday, we'll do more of these things. And that's it for me for today. No problem. I know, sorry. I went a little over.